In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the angle of impact as it pertains to blood spatter. So this is a refresher video if you were in class and you need a little bit more help, or if you were absent from class, you really want to make sure that you pay attention to the video. Uh, you will need to know how to do these calculations for the quiz. So a couple of reminders, we talked already about the fact that when blood travels through the air, it is in a spherical shape. And I wanted to show you two diagrams to kind of show you where we actually get the trig functions from to be able to use them for calculating angle of impact. So if you look here, this is supposed to be the droplet of blood. It's flying through the air. And this down here would be the surface that it's going to hit. So it could be any surface, it could be the floor, it could be the wall, it doesn't matter. But the point is, is as this blood droplet is coming in, it's going to hit the surface here at point B and it's going to then spread out. This is the width of the blood droplet and this is the length of the blood droplet. And if you notice, it forms a right angle, so we have a right triangle, which is why we're able to use the trig functions. So again, here's another diagram if you kind of want to envision that. Here we have the blood droplet traveling through air. It's going to hit here and then it's going to spread out. The question that we're looking for that we want to solve is this right here. We want to know what the angle of impact is for that particular blood droplet. Okay, so if you're actually looking at it um, as like an aerial image, like straight down, this is what you're going to see in your blood droplet. The blood droplet hits here and it continues to spread out. So we have what's called the width. Remember the width is always the smaller of the two numbers. And then the length, which is the larger of the two numbers. And remember, the closer you get to 90 for the angle of impact, um, the more those numbers are going to be very, very similar. So you have to be extremely precise in your measurements. You have to be very critical with the ruler um, and making those measurements. Okay, so just a reminder for your, um, your uh, trig functions that you learned in math. The one that we're going to do today is the sine function. So if you remember, the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite, I'll even write that out, over the hypotenuse. So if we look here, this is the angle that we're looking at. So the opposite would be this measurement right here, and then the hypotenuse would be this measurement down here. Remember, hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. The opposite is actually going to give us, or is going to be, the width of the blood droplet, and the hypotenuse is going to be the length of the blood droplet. Now bear with me a moment. Let me show you how we actually solve for this part right here. The angle is what we really want. So it's almost like saying sine of your variable. That is the part that we want to solve is equal to the width of your blood droplet divided by the length. If we rearrange that, we would need to divide both sides by sine. And so really what you're going to have in your calculations is width divided by length, and then you're going to take the inverse sine of that measurement. Okay, so let's practice, because I know it gets a little mumble jumbled in your head. Um, if you were in class, you should recognize this is the worksheet that we were doing in class to practice this. If you are not in class, this worksheet should be available on Schoology, so you want to make sure that you take a look at it. So let's use this first blood droplet right here. You can see that we're going to measure the width in millimeters, and we're going to measure the length in millimeters. Um, the width, remember, is the smaller of the two numbers. Um, this one does not have a tail in it, but when we get down to these, that does have this little drop of blood that is the tail. We're actually not going to include that in the length, but don't worry about that right now. We'll get to that in a moment. So you will need a ruler and you will need a calculator that has the trig functions on it. Um, you could even use your phone calculator. Uh, if you turn your smartphone sideways, you'll usually see those trig functions pop up. 
Um, so also remember, we're going to use millimeters. Millimeters are these tiny little hash marks. So if you count them, for every one centimeter, there is 10 millimeters. So there's two centimeters, we would be at 20 millimeters. Uh, three centimeters, we would be at 30 millimeters. So again, you want to make sure that you are really precise. Um, so I'm going to put my ruler down so that the zero is on one edge of the blood droplet. And then I am going to measure the width. And I get about 19 millimeters. You can see it's not quite to that two mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 19. And then I'm going to measure the length. Now this blood droplet looks like it was almost dropped from straight up and down. So I wouldn't be surprised if this number is not much larger than 19. All right, so if I take a look, I really have about, nine, it almost looks like another 19, but it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to estimate it at 19.5. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my width divided by my length. And if I do that on my calculator, I have 19 divided by 19.5. And that gives me 0 0.97. We'll just kind of round it to that hundredths number. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inverse sign. Now you got to find that on your calculator or your phone. In this case, you can see it written in green. See it says sign to the negative one. So it's actually above the sign button. So on my calculator, I have to hit second and then that button sign in order to get the inverse. And on this particular calculator, I believe I actually have to put in my number first, 0.97 and then I'm gonna hit second sign to get the inverse, and there I get my angle. 75.9 would be my angle of impact. Okay, let's practice this again, and let's actually look at one that has a tail. So first things first, I'm gonna measure the width. The width is going to be side to side, so it's a pretty small one here. I got about six and a half here, about 6.5. And then the length. So in this, I'm going to eyeball, kind of estimate that the length of the blood droplet ends here. The parent drop ends there, and then the tail begins. I do not want to include the tail in my measurement. So if I come up here and I measure that, I'm at about 22. So I get to the 20 mark, which is where the 2 is, and then I'm just a couple hash marks past that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, remember, is W slash L, that's width, divided by length. So I'm going to do that in my calculator, 6.5 divided by 22, and I get 0 0.295. I'm going to go ahead and round that to 0 0.3, and then I'm going to take 0.3, and I'm going to do the inverse sign in my calculator, and I get 17.4 as my angle. So again, you can keep practicing this. The biggest thing is careful with your measurements. You want to be very precise. This worksheet was asking for us to measure in millimeters. Those are the tiniest hash marks. And then you also want to make sure that you know exactly how to calculate it using your calculator. One last thing to mention if you notice, sorry about that. Ah, mine says DEG, that means I'm in the degree mode on my calculator. Sometimes your calculator might be in an RAD mode for radians. You want to make sure you get out of the radians and put yourself in the degree mode. If you have any questions, you know where to find me or you can email me and we can try to get this sorted out. But I would encourage you to continue practicing this. You can also go to Google and just type in practicing angle of impact for blood spatter and you'll see lots of other video tutorials as well as practice worksheets.